Hello, hello. Anybody out there? Say hi when you jump on. So I know you're there. Just trying to find the cord so I can plug us in so we won't die tonight on the live. Anybody out there? I had all my markers pulled already and I put them all away. Changing my mind. Well, we just might have to get started with no visitors. I don't really see anybody jumping on. Am I early? Is that early, babe? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, what are you guys doing? I was refilling markers before the live. Um, just trying to get this in the right spot. Let me see if I can tag some people. Get me some people to hang out with. Hey, hey, hey. Say hello when you jump on. Hey, Mom. Hey, Marianne. Looky there. I got people. Woohoo! Hi, Michelle. Yay. Okay. You guys was making me a little nervous. I thought I wasn't going to have any peeps to have fun with tonight. Okay. So, here's the deal. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do tonight. Hi, Mama. Um... And I kind of wavered back and forth and back and forth. Um, I was going to color some of these fish because I just love them. But I wanted to do a background with it as well. And you know how we are. We get to going and doing the backgrounds. And um, I'm just winging it. So I played around this afternoon. And I'm going to show you what I came up with that I thought would be fun for us to do tonight. But now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you... Hey, Bestie, if you want to do the whole thing tonight or if you want to do part of it tonight and part of it another night because I'm willing to sit here as long as it takes, but I think it's going to take a little while. I'm good. I'm good, 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 Cheryl. This is what I want us to color tonight. So I did this sample of it. Those are some well-used fish. I did this sample of it this afternoon, and I thought, wouldn't this be fantastic on the live tonight? Now, what's going to happen is we are going to do this, and it is everything except for these items that I stamped. So I stamped them on a blank sheet like this, and then we're going to build the whole entire scene from there. No, Jamie was not feeling well. I'm kind of surprised that she's feeling good enough right now for um, this live, but I'm super happy she's here. So this is any fin is possible. You guys have told, heard us talking about how many fish we've colored for the make and takes, and you can tell how worn out my little fish are. But um, I figured since we've been talking about it a lot, why not go over how to do it so you guys can do it with me? I love that it comes with the dyes. Hi, Jen. And I I just love these little fish. I mean, they're so much fun and so much you can do with them. So I went ahead and stamped these three on here. And then I put the little seaweed just to kind of give me a, a starting point for the background. So this is what we're, oh, that's not it. That's not the right one. 
this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to build this entire scene on this piece of paper. Now, it won't look exactly the same because I can't ever replicate the exactly the same thing, but it will be close enough. And if you missed last night's live, we made this. So this was super fun. So if you missed that last night, then you can check it out on YouTube or in the group in a uh, previous live. So I went ahead to save time because this background's going to take us a bit of time to do. Do the no, they don't actually. Those are um, those are really cheap um, business card magnets. You see how they're the shape of a business card? You can buy them on Amazon, and you get them in a huge lot. And you just it, they're already sticky, so you just peel off the paper and stick it on there, and then it works for your magnets. And that's how I do all of mine. It's just I you used to be able to get them at like home at like Office Depot, but they quit carrying them so I get them on Amazon now and I buy a whole bunch at one time and that's how I do all my dies so they always stay with my stamps and my dies and then I put this cute little like a little mark on the stamp set so when I'm flipping through them all I can tell which ones have dies and which ones don't so um yeah and then you only put as many as you need if you need more you put another you know I love it and it's inexpensive easy way to keep them there and the only time they move around are when they're not sitting flat. So as long as you store them all flat on here like this, they, they pretty much stay where they're supposed to stay. So I love that. But that's how I do all of mine. That's how I do all my stamp sets. And now Jamie does hers like that too. Because <laughs> it's just awesome. So this is going to look or appear like we're doing a bunch of drawing. And you guys know I have an art background, so please don't be afraid of that because it's not. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be easier than you think. So we're gonna start. I started with the C zero. Now we are gonna use a lot of markers on this, but I will list them all um, on the YouTube video. So if you need them, you'll know. But it is gonna take quite a few markers to do this one. So this is my C0, and this is where I'm going to sketch out the scene a bit in this light color. So if I change my mind on something, I can still, I can still fix it and change it. You won't be able to see it. Yes, I've heard people say they cut down magnetic vent cover sheets. I've heard of that as well. I had already been using the other ones when I heard of that, so I just stuck with it. A Jamie amount of markers. Yes, a Jamie amount of markers. That is exactly what we're going to do tonight. It is going to be a Jamie amount of marker night. You ready? Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do was sketch me a stone over here, like a, a kind of a stone wall. So what I did was I just came in here and I just, like, not even smooth lines, just... Kind of a, a sketchy line, I guess you'd call it. And I kind of made it go in and out and, you know, then went around the fish. And then I just kind of took it to the bottom. And in order to make it a little more, I'd say, detailed, I went ahead and just kind of put a little line, like, almost like when, the, when it's building up from the earth. It kind of layers as it goes so I just kind of put those little layers in there it's a little bit hard to see I'm gonna try to zoom in a bit more so you can kind of see what I'm doing um, so I'm just sketching in this little rock right here and then I thought well I need I need some coral in here so I put myself like this rounded coral kind of right here and what I wanted to do was I wanted to put these little circles in it. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in there. Because the coral just looks really cool with the circles in it. So I'm really just, they're almost a little bit more like ovals than circles. And I'm just putting them in there. A few of them kind of off the page as well. So that kind of gives me a little piece of coral right here. Okay, we'll see you in a bit, Marianne. And then 
I decided that I would put another type of coral right here and I wanted it to have these long arms and these round uh, things almost like horns kind of so I started sketching them out they're not real clean right now but it doesn't really matter because we can go over this and change it a little bit as we're going along So just kind of sketching that in a little bit. We got a little bit, one. we got one there. And then I'm just putting the circles in those as well. And this will become more prominent when we, when we actually put the color in there. It, it, nature is imperfect, that's right, just go with it. So when I first started drawing these ones that I'm going to draw now, I was like, oh, I hate that. And my husband was like, I like it. It doesn't look bad at all. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just go with it. So we're going to draw in here just straight lines that kind of come out, go around. We're going to come back. They're going to look a little bit like, I don't know, sort of like this one. But we're going to color them different colors. So then I'm gonna bring one, I like them to crisscross, so I'm gonna bring one that's gonna kinda of come out this way. And so this is really just randomly putting lines on the paper, giving me an idea of where I would like to put each one of these. So I wanted a little one kinda of coming off this side right here. So I thought that would be neat. And I also needed one that you couldn't see the other part of it. So I kind of came up here, I went past the fish, and just kind of made it rounded, came back down. And then maybe can do some cactus sometime. I need a bunch of Texas colors next fall. Yes, I can do cactus sometime. Let me write that on the list. And speaking of the list, um, I have that I never told you guys the squirrel story. I have on the list that you guys wanted to hear the squirrel story and I had not told it yet, so I'm going to tell the squirrel story tonight. So I got another one right here. And I wanna come all the way down with this one alongside this. And then I'm gonna do one more just right here and it's gonna kinda of go behind this one and then stop. So there's a little bit of coral there. Squirrel! Okay, good thing Marianne made it back for the squirrel story. I also wanted to do a different type of coral over here. So I started by just making these little, almost like horn-like shapes, like, a, like you're blowing a horn shape. And I was just kind of making them up as I was going. I didn't really have any rhyme or reason to them. Just kind of made them up and thought they might be kind of fun. And when I did them the last time, I gave them like a round bottom. But I think tonight, because I have a smaller space, that I'm just going to make them real little right here. Oh no, the squirrel story! Mom knows the squirrel story. And you know how she knows? Because she was there! Okay. So I'm going to put some kind of little coral thing right here, and it's going to come out just like that. And I'm going to put a little one over here. So it almost looks like grass, pretty easy, but just mark in the spot. Over here, I'm going to put this little, like, I don't know what you call that, some kind of growth thing going on here. And I'm just going to put that there, and then I ended up putting a little one off to the side. So I'll deal with the details of that when we get to it. And then up here, I drew a jellyfish because I thought, you know, hey, how cool would that be? So let me show you how to draw an easy jellyfish. Now, we have an amazing jellyfish in the shop. I say amazing. I drew it. I'm not going to lie, but I do think it's pretty super cute. But it looks like this. But look at how big that is. It didn't really fit in here with the other ones, so I didn't want to stamp it out, so I decided to draw one out. So basically, if you want to draw a more realistic looking jellyfish, you kind of do this like 
round-ish shape here, or that's how I did it anyway, with a little bit of a flat-ish bottom, I guess. So really it looks pretty simple right now. And then I just did these little tentacles off of it. First I did a few of them, you know, and then I crisscrossed a few, made a few little longer. And those will be more detailed when we actually, um, when we actually draw them out. But for now, that's a very simple look. And it's great. It leaves a space over here for a sentiment and maybe even a little hook, fish hook in there that we can draw in later. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> you get that song out of your head? A SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> You're Sandy Bottoms. I am Sandy. What is that? Sandy Bottom. Sandy squirrel. Bottoms. Isn't that what it is? And she's a squirrel. So squirrel story. That's where the squirrel story comes in perfectly. Good job. So, okay. So while, while we're getting ready for the squirrel story, let me tell you what color I used for the rock. So I used E87. I have to pull them out again because I, I put them away. I did some marker cleaning. E44, E84, E42, E81. And then since we're going to have that little bit of coral in there, we're going to need YR18 and 15. So I'm going to pull those out as well. So that's 18 and 15 in the orange for the little bit of coral that's going to be on the rock. And then this is going to be the five color blend that I used for the rock. So 87, 44, 84, 42, 81. We'll be mixing them all up, but these are the five that we're going to be using to form out this rock. So I'm going to start, and as I start, when I'll start telling the story. You do it sometimes too. So, okay, so E87. Actually, let's start with E84. That we can do the we can always go darker, it's harder to go lighter. So let's start with the E84 to kind of build in the frame of that and then we'll darken it as we go. So, you thought it was to get a juicy part of the She was talking about you spinning your Copic. Why do I spin my, I don't know why I do that. You know what, I noticed I do that on the, when I rewatched the live. I don't know, I don't even realize I'm doing it. I just do it. I don't know why, but I do it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, so just kind of sketching this out so you can follow along with how I'm doing this while I tell you my story. So here's my story. My mom and I went to Colleen to do a little visiting with some friends and some scrapbooking and stuff, and we decided that we would stay in one of the houses that my parents own that um, was for sale. So there wasn't anyone staying in it. So we thought, well, that'd be a great place for us to stay, so we'll just go stay there. Well, we were sleeping on the floor on a mattress, and it's morning time now, and my mom comes in there, and she wakes me up, and she says, there's something in the bathroom. And I said, what do you mean? And she's like, there's something in the bathroom. And I said, where? I mean, I hadn't even gotten up at this point because I was like, whatever. And um, I don't really know what she means. And so she goes, I sat back on the toilet and I heard it scratch on the wall. So there's something in there and I don't know what it is. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I go in there to check it out. And... I get my phone out and I turn the light on. Hi, Kim. And I shine it back there and that squirrel's little beady eyes looked out at me and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a squirrel in there. And my mom goes, how the heck does a squirrel get in the house? By the way, we never really figured that out, <laughs> but somehow that squirrel got creative. Um, and so I said, okay, well, let's call and maybe like, 
whatever the pest control service is that you call that can come and, you know, take care of, you know, things like that. So we try to call, we get on the phone, and the guy says, $250 and we'll come check it out. I don't know, a few years, five years maybe, maybe six years, something like that. And he goes, for about $250, and I said, okay, no thank you. So I got off the phone, and I told my mom, $250. Oh, we're not paying $250 to get a squirrel out of the bathroom. That's insane. So we have a friend that lives down there that does pest control. So I said, how about we just call this person and see if they'll come over and um, get it for us. So I call, no answer. And in the meantime, we're a little bit nervous because we're like, oh my gosh, we got to figure out $260. It's insane. So um, we were a little nervous about it. So I said, okay, nobody's answering. We're not paying the money. So just let, just find me a box or something and like a broom or something and I'll just get it. I'll just go in there and I'll get it. And she was like, what? <laughs> Are you crazy? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'll just go in there and I'll just put like the little broom behind the toilet, kind of swish it back there. When he comes out, I'll just kind of, you know, guide him into the box and we'll be good. And she was like, okay. And I go, all right. So she gets me a broom and she gets me a box. And I go in there probably looking like I'm <laughs> like in charge of the whole situation when clearly I was not. And um, so I go in there and I'm all brave and everything. And I say, I stick that broom back there. <laughs> and that thing came flying out of there and it was running all over the bathroom. It was all over the sink and it was in the bathroom and it was in the toilet. And, it was, and I was screaming. And then I opened the door and I came out. And my mom's like, what is going on? And I said, I don't know. It freaked me out when it came out. I don't know what we're going to do. And so we're standing there, and I'm telling you, I wish I could have had a camera in that bathroom because that would have won me some America's Funniest Home videos. But um, I decided I was going to brave it again. I'm going to go back in there, and I'm going to get it. It's easy. I can see it sitting on the bathtub, and it's breathing heavy and fast. It, I probably scared it more than it scared me. And so I'm like, I can do this. I, I can totally do this. So I go in there. And I lay the box like on the floor in front of him. And I think if I just put it the, you know, if I just take the broom and come in behind him, he'll go, he'll go into the box. You know, I'm thinking it'll work. It'll work. It should work. And so I do that. And this squirrel jumped at me, landed on my chest, and I flung it back out <laughs> into, the, into the shower. It ran around the shower and I come screaming out again <laughs> from the bathroom <laughs> and yes my mom was screaming from the other side going what's going on in there what's going on in there and I'm just freaking out and so now I'm out of the bathroom for the second time and the squirrel is still in the bathroom probably scared to death so I, I calm myself down and I did de I decide okay now this thing has been on my chest <laughs> and I was freaked out but I'm like I'm still gonna do this I'm I was dedicated to catching this because I was like we are not gonna pay for that and so I um I, d I get my control of myself and I go in there one more time <laughs> It wasn't. I mean, I didn't hurt him. I just, he was fine. Trust me. I'll get to the end of the story. So I, um, I go in there one more time and he, this time, hi, Julie. He's, oh, I read the tag. I thought was underwear. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I go in there one more time. I'm telling my squirrel story, Julie. I don't think you've heard it, but I go in there one more time and I decide, okay, this time he's sitting on the floor instead of on the bathtub right? So I'm like, it's got to be easy to get him to go into that box. So I move the box back a little bit and I go in there and I kind of walk towards it and um, it just runs right into the box, right into the box. And so I close the lid really fast 
And I picked it up and I said, open the door, open the door. So my mom comes out, opens the door and lets me out. And she's like, oh my God, do you have it? And I was like, I do. It's in the box. It's in the box. So I run outside and I open the box. I take the box and I just shake it downwards, you know, towards the ground. Nothing comes out. And I'm like, I know I put that squirrel in this box. <laughs> and I shake it again, nothing comes out. I shake it a third time, nothing comes out. And so I just laid it on the ground and that thing came flying out of that box, ran down the street and took off. And I was like, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> I got it, I got it out. And so I turned around to my mom and I said, oh, I think dad should pay me the $250 for doing that. <laughs> And we laughed about it for a long time, but it was pretty funny. So that was my squirrel story. But if you'd have been there and saw it, it was so chaotic and crazy that I think just having it on video would have been so funny. It just did not want to come out of that box. We shook the box and tried to get it to come out. It just did not want to. It was scared. I scared it. I'm sure I did. But he ran on his way through the neighborhood and... You know, I choose to think he lived a happy little life outside of our house. So that's my scary squirrel story. It scared me, but I was brave. Sandy the Squirrel Whisper. <laughs> it would not come out. I had no idea what was going to be back there, but it, it felt like one of those horror stories where, where somebody comes in, wakes you up, and says, There's something in the house. <laughs> And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, she woke me up. It freaked her out. <laughs> yeah, I bet he does. <laughs> Tell his human friend about his human friend he's scared. Oh, my gosh. It was so crazy. It was such a crazy story. It's a little bit more effective if you see me do all the actions when I tell the story. But um, still funny just the same. So I'm really just layering these colors in here to build this, um, this little rock area. Just layering them and layering them because I want it, you know, to look rock. Oh, that's right. He did. <laughs> that's right. The exterminator guy called back after he got home from church. He was at church when I called. And he was like, so what's going on? And I was like, well... We had this squirrel in the house, and I was going to see if you could help me get it out. But it's okay. I already got it. And he was like, what? And I said, yeah, I got it out of the house. So I kind of told him the story, and he's like, uh, you want a job? <laughs> I said, no, thank you. One time doing that is enough for me. But, yeah, if, if there's... And the funniest part about the story is if there's a little water bug in the house, I'm screaming like my head's cut off and I cannot pick them up. I cannot get them out of my house. But a squirrel, yeah, no fear. But yeah, he did call back, but I got it. I did it. Successful. I was so proud of myself afterwards, too. I was like, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. But I did. But I would not let my mom go in there. I was like, she just, she was already freaked out because something was behind the bathtub. But it was pretty crazy. It felt like very chaotic and very crazy. Oh, you can't, you'll have to watch the replay and listen to the story. I almost want to write that down because it's so funny. Okay, so back to the E84. We went through the darkest E87, E44. And then we're going to do E84. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, that, so that's my squirrel story. I was surprised I'd never told you that story before, Jamie, but I guess it just never came up. But yeah, it was pretty crazy. I did it, though. I had no fear. This wasn't a nice squirrel that just wanted a few nuts and he'd be happy. This was, I mean, he was mad that we was in his place um i don't know i never figured out we never i don't think we ever figured out how he got in the house because and really honestly thank goodness we found him because he wouldn't have made it you know 
Yeah, you can see it in your brain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he would not have, if he couldn't have got out of the house, he would not, because nobody was living there. So that was really his only opportunity to get to, so I choose to think that I saved him as well, even though I scared him in the process. His heart rate, was, his heartbeat was going, he was breathing so heavy sitting on the side of that bathtub. I can still see it in my mind today. So funny. Hi, Yvonne. Yeah, it does suck being sick. Oh, Jack is still not feeling too well. He's letting, <laughs> he's choking me out over here. I know, it was his kingdom. I ran him out of town. But there was no food in there, you know. There, nobody was living there, so there was no food. There was nothing for him. I, I'm thinking that he got stuck in there, and then he was maybe drinking the water, you know, to survive, and that's why he was in the bathroom. And then when my mom got up in the morning, it scared him so bad, he hid behind the toilet. <laughs> And she sat back on the toilet, and he scratched on the wall, and it scared the crap out of her. <laughs> no pun intended. And she uh, she woke me up to take care of it. It was so funny. I was half asleep, like, why are you waking me up? <laughs> uh, we were definitely awake after that, though, so there was no more sleep than after that. <laughs> and then we've laughed about it many, many times since then. So here's the last color, which is the E81, which I'm going to use to kind of lighten and smooth out that that rock area that we built. So you saw how easy that was. It was really just the strokes back and forth um, with all the different colors. And now we're just doing a little bit of the blending. So it's pretty easy. I would say fairly easy. And then we have a little rock. All <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't think that literally, but yeah, <laughs> the way I said that kind of <laughs> kind of fell in that. <laughs> um, okay, so those are that's my um, that's my rock, and then now we're gonna start working on the coral from the left to the right. So RV sixty nine, sixty six. V05, 04, 12, and 01. I don't think we're using all of these on this particular piece of coral, but maybe, you never know. Okay, so I think RV69 was the one I just used at the end to outline. So we're gonna start with RV66. Oh my gosh, it could have been awful. <laughs> V05, V04, V12, and V01. Now in these caps, they all look like they go in the right, um, like that's the right color sequence. But I have suspicions that might not be accurate. So we're gonna test it out real quick. Because you know I like to do that. So that's my 66. That's my V05. Oh, that works pretty good. I think that one's a little low on juice, though. I did just refill 15 markers before we started this. Yep. Good. V12. Yep, see, I think I want V12 in front of this V04 because see how the color changes here? This one matches better with this one and this one. So I'm going to use all of these and then I'm going to come back in with this really bright purple right here to give some accent to, to it. So this is going to be actually the order in which we do it. Yay! Your purple blend station arrived today. Doesn't that make you super happy? Okay, RV66, we're going to do this, this one with it. So the first thing I want to do is outline this coral. 
And I mean, coral comes in every kind of shape and color and just whatever you want to do. So it doesn't really, it's, it's super great because it doesn't have to be perfect, um, perfectly drawn in any way. Just so long as you get some of the, the really cool features on it and you should be good. So I'm going to outline these, but I will have to outline them a couple more times. James. So now I... Huh? James. Okay, hope you feel better, bestie. At least you got to be here for the squirrel story. Okay, so we're just drawing in these little circles on this coral. Some big, some small. See you in the morning. Speaking of, I won't be on tomorrow night, but I'll do a post in the group so you know. I'm going to go visit my friend out of town. So I'm going to be on the road tomorrow and then with them. So I won't be able to go live because I won't have all my equipment to do a live from there so but I'll be back on Monday maybe Sunday depending on how I feel when I get home and uh, but definitely by Monday and then um, and then we'll be back at it which is kind of why I really didn't want to split up this video because I didn't want you guys to have to wait too long in between them I know <laughs> wouldn't want to miss that story for nothing so I thought I'd do it while you were on, because I thought that was really helpful. Because you'd have been sad if you missed this story. Okay, so just kind of outlining it, reinforcing that outline. I'm going to use a darker marker to do the outline one last time, so it doesn't matter that these are really overlapping with the brown, so I'm okay with that. Yes, I am going to Nolanville. Yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, one of my, like I have a friend in Nolanville, and our other friend, um, she lives in Georgia, and she is currently visiting uh, our friend in Nolanville, so if I go there, I get to see them both. So that's why I'm going. Toodles. See you later, Jamie. So yes, I'm going to see my friend tomorrow. Mother friend. Okay, so this is, so I'm following with the same color, staying with the same color. This one's a little bit different, but not as different as that other one is. So I'm just kind of filling in some of it right now. Sort of just, doesn't even matter, like, exactly where you put it. What really matters is when you get to the end and how you do the inside of the circles that give it the pop. The really big, like, wow factor. I will. Huh? Pam Dye started watching. Oh, hello, Pam. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. I'm super stoked about going to see my my friend in Nolanville. Hey, it says Ellen is watching, but I think Ellen was already watching. Did it kick you out again, Ellen? I hate it when it does that to you. Okay, B01. And this is the last... Um, color in the sequence that I'm doing the top of this not the circles but the other part this is the last color in that there's one more color but I'm going to use that for some accenting so this is kind of the last color in this in this three four color combo we actually have five but I like how this looks I know. I wish you could go with me, too. Okay. 
So now this color right here, V04, is going to be a different tone than what we're seeing in the rest of it. So first thing I'm going to do is go around these circle areas. No, not around the outside, around the inside. Just kind of fill in those in just a little bit. I'm going to come in with the darker color in a minute. So that just kind of sets the tone for that. And then I'll come back to this color in a minute. But I'm going to pull out that RB69 that I said I was just going to use for a little while, but it wasn't my first color. And I'm going to do the outside. Pam's asking what the name of the stamp image is. Oh, this is Any Fin is Possible. And I'm actually drawing in the whole scene or coloring in the whole scene with Copics except for this and this piece of seaweed and these three fish but there's actually a whole lot more fish in the set so there's one two three four five six fish in the set it's called anything is possible it's a lot of fun we've done a lot of work with these fish so far now you guys, when Jamie came the last time, we colored like 400 fish. That took a long time. But it was fun. So I'm building in that like ridge that's dark that shows that it's, it's kind of rounded is the purpose of that. You love this stamp image? Yeah. I do too. I love these fish. I think this one is my favorite when I look at it this is my favorite to color okay back to the vo4 and this is where I'm gonna smooth out this area that I just put in there now I'm round the outside round the outside and then I feel like I picked up some of that RV um, 69 on this marker so I just wiped it off on a plain piece of paper now I am going to go back in with my RV 69 and what I'm going to do is these circles right here I'm not going to go all the way around but I want to do the underside of them thick so almost all the way around but much thicker at the bottom So this one, just going to draw a really tiny thin line down there. And this hopefully gives the appearance that, that these are holes and not just circles on the, the image. So thicker on the bottom. And most of the way around. And see what it's doing. Oh, you can hear me. Yay, you can hear me. You may have to, if you couldn't hear me during this story, you may have to go back for the squirrel story because it was pretty funny. Are you doing any bubbles? I am going to do some bubbles, yes. I'm going to show a simple, easy way to do some bubbles. But it's probably going to take me a little bit to get there. We're going to do this coral on step first. I knew this one would take a while for me to do. But I figured you guys wouldn't mind. So I don't know if you could hear, but that was Jack. He's got his cone on right now, so he's very unhappy with me. So this is the 66 kind of blending out that really, really dark color, but not on the full circle because I want to come in with a lighter color for the top of it. I should actually finish off the circle, though, with this one. And then blend the bottom because I think that'll look better. I 
I didn't learn this from anybody else. I just looked at actual coral and kind of made up something on my own. So I hope you guys like it. I think I missed this one. And this one. Oh, good night, Jen. Okay, so I'm going to come in with this V05, and I'm going to fill in that circle now. I really want to do that so I can blend the colors together. Then I'm going to come back in with the colorless blender and kind of lighten some of those spots up. So I'll show you how you do that. As soon as I figure out what I do with my colorless blender. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. And what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of this colorless blender in like a half moon shape at the top of each one of these. And look at how much it changes that. This one needs a little thicker because the ink's a little thicker. But Just brief, not too long. You don't want to stay too long there. Or the color will just flow right back in there. We don't want that. If we have to hit this again after it dries, we can, like we did with the bats last night. But for now, this gives a really pretty look to this. I think it helps a lot. So then when I, when I did that, I thought it was really, really cool, but I thought it would look even better if it had some spots in it. So, um, oh, the colorless blender, it's zero. And it says zero colorless blender. It's just the zero marker. It says it's a blender, but it's not really a blender. Um, so RV69, and then I'm just going to use, I'm going to hold the marker upright, and I'm going to use the very, very tip. I want teeny, tiny little dots, and I want them to be really small all over this very light area. I think this marker's nib needs to be cleaned a little bit. It's just putting some spots in there. Oh my gosh, I'm going to need you to spray that air freshener. This dog is killing me. No joke. I'm not kidding. It's right there on the floor. This poor little guy. Oh. He's not feeling well, so he's gassing me out of this room. I don't want him to leave the room because he's wearing the cone. And Okay, that's good. Thanks. Thanks, honey. I don't want him to leave the room because he fights the cone, but... So we're just putting... I mean, this is literally just teeny tiny spots, which I think just really makes this come together. So see how cool that looks? And it was super easy. It really wasn't hard. Okay, so the next one that we're going to do is this coral right here, the long coral. So for that one, I'm going to start stacking my markers because we're going to have a whole bunch of them out here in a minute. YG97, YG95, 91... And then we're going to touch that up with the 99 at the end to make those pop. Kind of, I know, poor little Jack. He's just, oh. it should be called the remover marker. I agree a thousand percent. It should be called the remover marker or the pusher marker. <laughs> okay, so this is really the, um, the YG90 blend run of all the markers in the YG 90s well he had he had a cyst that was really big on his back and I was worried about it so I took him in and he evidently I didn't realize that he had had one of the anal glands had ruptured 
And so he's not allowed to lick back there. So we have to put the cone on because when we don't, when we aren't looking, he's back there doing what he's not supposed to be doing. So he doesn't want to go to the bathroom when we send him outside. So then he sits in here and toots and smells bad. So yeah, he's killing me over here. Okay. So now I'm going to just build in those lines for those, um, those seaweed with this YG97. So poor little guy. And they, they have to see him again in two weeks to decide if they're actually going to have to do surgery to remove that, that cyst on his back if it doesn't get any better. Yeah, see, and they said that a lot of people do, but I've never had to do that for Jack before, so it was it was really a surprise to me. But I felt bad because she was like, poor little guy, he's probably in some pain, so she gave me some pain meds for him. But when you first put the cone on, he sits around and cries. Oh, yeah, yeah, show me how. You could just come do it for me. <laughs> I'm not sure I could do that. But, yeah, I've heard it's not, it's not hard, I heard, but, ugh. So I'm really just kind of tracing over these lines that we drew in there earlier at the beginning. And I'm just trying to make them. Oh, yeah. Jack's a sweetie. He is good. They told me at the vet he was really good when they did all the procedures they did because they had to they had to check the cyst to make sure because it has he has that cyst but then he also has something on top of it that's that was oozing stuff so they said he was really good when they you know had to release it so they could look at it under the microscope to make sure he didn't have like a malignant thing under there and he doesn't he's good so he'll be okay okay so now we have this little seaweed stuff going on or coral, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's a bit on the crazy. <laughs> it's a little bit of a crazy video tonight, that's for sure. But. And I'm eating robin eggs. I just couldn't help myself. They're sitting on my desk. And I was like, oh. Those would taste so good. So now I'm just going in with the YG95 and just starting to color in some of this. Now this will blend really well and kind of wash out these numbers. So that's why we have the YG99 on hold because we're going to use that to go back in and, and, and reiterate those lines here in a little bit. So I tried to thicken the side that I felt like was with the sun coming this way, even though it's all underwater. Um, we are going to put some lighter water like where the sun, you can tell where the sun is on that area. So for this one, the fish is kind of shading that area. And then this is far away. This one's overlapping a little bit right here. And then this part right here is behind the fish. And then right here, this one's shadowed by the one above it. And then the back side. There we go. Jordan almonds are better. I have those on my desk as well. Right? <laughs> my honey bowl. <laughs> I have robin eggs and 
as you can tell, it was a long day today, and I needed some, <laughs> I needed some candy. Although I did get a nice surprise today. My daughter had some dental work done, and she was like, I'm not going to be able to get Cooper in time. Can you go pick him up? And I was like, oh, yes. Oh, so he came over and colored all evening with me. And then she came and picked him up. So I got the surprise of spending some time with him. So that was fun. Of course, you know, Angela, we watched Frozen again. Frozen 2, actually. And then I got him to actually change to Wreck-It Ralph, with, which is a surprise because usually he won't watch anything but Frozen or Dinosaurs. But I did get him to watch Wreck-It Ralph. He liked it. He said it was good. And he colored fish because I colored the, one of these and he colored fish. Oh, I know. Yes, he did like Wreck-It Ralph. I was surprised because sometimes he's not a huge fan of them if I... Because he said, you pick for me, Grandma. And so I put Raya the Last... I pulled Raya the Last Dragon up. And he goes, Grandma, you like that movie? And I said, yeah, I like that movie. Do you like that movie? And he goes, um... <laughs> I was like, would you like me to pick a different one? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. Yeah, he does like The Grinch, too. We watch The Grinch year-round. The real live version Grinch with Jim Carrey. We watch that year-round. Oh, yeah. We did Monsters University once. He liked that, too. I like the Monsters, even, too. I like all Disney movies. I'm not going to lie. I like them all. There's only been a few that I've been like, yeah, I saw that once. I'm good. Not very many, though. We actually watched that um, <clears throat> Red Panda one yesterday. Dale and I watched it. And it was really cute. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Teen Wolf. <laughs> Do you guys remember Teen Wolf with Michael J. Fox? Where he turned into a wolf when he, uh, werewolf when he got older? It kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, I never really was a big Roger Rabbit either. You know, Angela, when we get together next weekend, we could certainly watch Frozen 2 while we're crafting and learning. Or save enough time and we could watch it after. If you have enough time to hang out. That would be awesome. I'm always up for Disney movies. I like Moana a lot, but I've seen it a lot. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with my YG99 real quick to do the in-between. These, where I want the darkest part to be. We are going to have to go over it one more time with another color, just because um, this is going to make it significantly darker, and we want, we're going to want to blend that out a little bit, but yeah. Right down here where they overlap. You see how much of a difference you get when you add back in that really dark shade. And then what I did was I just kind of drew some really light lines just right in the center part. Kind of to show a little bit more stuff, detail within the... Kind of like they were split down the middle because, I don't know. Not that they match any kind of uh, coral or weed I've ever seen, but I just thought it would be a neat addition to it. So I did it on some of them. I did a full line and some scattered lines and just to kind of give it a little bit of personality there. See, I think it looks better. You're going to go to Disney in two days? Oh, I'm jelly too. I think in a couple of weeks, we're going to go to um, Universal Studios for a day. Okay, YG95. So I'm going to skip 97 because I think it's too dark. I'm going to go to YG95. 
because I don't really want to darken this. I just want to smooth it out. So I'm going to skip to YG95. And I just want to smooth out these little edges that I put in that were pretty dark. So just kind of following through with a few different places where I want to just smooth it out a little bit more. Not a bunch of places, but just a few. Like I'd like there to be a little bit of darkness there. I like to put a little bit more here where they're intersecting. But I didn't want it to be too, too dark. So that's why I skipped to the YG95. And then I kind of want to smooth this out a little bit here and here. And then I'm just going to smooth that out as well. Okay, so that, that brings the conclusion to that one. 95 there. Wow. We had, uh, we got up to 78 today. We were 81 yesterday. I assume you're talking about temperature. But yeah, I think it will be super duper fun. I love Disney. I don't get to go very often, but I've been a couple of times. So this one, when we were going to put in that, um, that coral right here, it's probably not going to look exactly the way that I did it in the other one because I forgot to leave a space for it, but we're going to put it in there anyway. Because I think it'll look really good, but it just won't be as bright as the other one was. So kind of showing a little bit of coral growing up, growing out of the... Then I'm just putting in one more color to kind of soften it, extend them out a little bit. So they look like they go from dark to light. And then I'm putting one of the lighter colors in between the darker colors just to kind of give it... A little more fullness and then we'll do the same thing up here so they don't really stand out quite as well as they did on mine but they were a lot harder to color so I think I might wait on that one until we do the blue and then we'll put in the other one because it was so hard to color around that I don't want to do that to you guys okay so the next color is um, BG 78, 75, 72, and 70. So this is BG 78, 75, 72, and 70. And this is what we're going to do this little guy down here. He's going to look a little funny when we first start out. Because I'll tell you, when I did this the first time, I was like, mm, Wow, once a month for years. Wow, that's like I call that lucky for sure. Okay, so some of these got a little small, so I'm going to do a little bit more shaping with them when I do them with this uh with this color. So, I'm going to start by just making the the branches in the size that I want them to be. making sure that they all fit in there just the way I want them. Maybe I'll put another one out here. I didn't on the other one, but maybe I will on this one. So this one will just have a little bump that you'll be able to see. So I'm gonna go like that. And I'm putting these little half circles on here almost like mushroom tops. And then this part in here will all be dark, very dark. And then these will have circles in them. It looks a little funny, but we'll get there. It'll be fine when I get done. Hello, Sherry. 
jumping in late. BG70. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is draw in these little lines. I kind of like them on there, so I'm going to go ahead and put them in there now. I only want these little lines to go down to this round circle that these, these are coming off of, so... gonna do this one and this one and then I'm gonna color in this a little bit more the atmosphere at Hollywood Studios we haven't, I've only been to the Hogwarts thing one time a long time ago. So I'm excited about that. But we're going to, I think we're going to try to see the Jurassic stuff because you know how I am. Oh, the Haunted Mansion when they do it for Nightmare Before Christmas. That sounds amazing. So I'm going to kind of color in the bottom of the circle and underneath the circle. Kind of like here and here. Sort of for some shadowing effect. And then I'm going to go in there and I'm going to just kind of make these lines a little bit thicker. With the lighter color, but not too much because I don't want to blend them out. I would imagine if you get to go to Disney that often you get to see all the amazing stuff. I think when we went, it was springtime, so we got to see all the flowers and stuff. And that was really pretty. Okay. Now I'm going to use... Oh, I bet. Now I'm going to use the BG70. I'm going to kind of fill in that coloring. It's going to be really, really light. I'm not going to fill in the centerpiece, but just around the circle. These look a little funny, but when they get when you get done with them, they look pretty cool. Okay, just kind of filling in down here, smoothing out all those little lines. Good night. Okay, yeah. We'll see you next time. Remember, I'm not going to be here tomorrow night. But I'll be back on Monday. Okay. Now we're going to have to go back. Um, yes. Flights are expensive, and it, but it depends. We have a hub here, so the last time I looked, it was only like a hundred bucks to go to Florida. Could go up though. Okay, so I'm doing the top or all of the circle in this um, BG72 because I'm going to start darkening that circle up a bit. I also want to do a little bit right under this ridge to really make that look like it's darker. And now we're going to really darken up those, those circles because we want them to really look, look dark. Again, the darkness is what pulls in that popped look, like it's really popping out. Oh, you got to get up early. Eesh. I do not have to get up early tomorrow, which I'm super happy about. Hello, Brenda. So glad you were able to pop in. Okay, gonna go back with BG75. And this is where I'm going to go around 
the bottom ridge to make it stand out a little bit more. We are doing an underwater scene right now. Wow. Mm, Disney is absolutely magical. We took our kids when they were little. Because everybody's gotta everybody's gotta see Disney sometime. Okay, I'm gonna reinforce these lines in here because I've kind of washed them out so far. Okie doke. So I think it needs the BG72 in this area around it. Because that still looks white to me. And then if need be, we can always use the colorless blender, but I think this is going to fix it. Just putting like a little line down it to give it a little more personality. Okay, so now we have this one. So now we're going to do these two green leaves. Oh, me too. Me too. I want the coat co stuff to calm down for sure. Okay, so we need another coral. Oh, the seaweed, the, where's my list for that? I don't think I even wrote that down. Okay, good thing I have a good memory. Pretty sure I used YG6717. I don't know where they are. Are they already out here? Hey, I got missing markers. Don't you hate it when that happens? Um, okay, one moment please. I don't know why I'm missing some markers. I know I refilled them. Oh no. Okay, where could they be? Those escaped little markers. Maybe I dropped them on the floor. How can you have a whole bin of markers and then you can't find them when you need them? I guess we're going to have to switch to a different color. Because I don't know what I did with my YG03. But instead, we'll do... We'll do these. So instead of that one. So YG67... YG-17, YG-23, and YG-21. I don't know why I lost. I don't know what I did with my uh, YG-03. I probably... Oh, wait a minute. There it is. I put it in the wrong spot. Yeah. Well, we'll stick with these. Okay. So, YG-67. Just tell me he cried all day. Aw, that's... Aww. I bet that was amazing. Okay, so putting in these solid um, shadowy areas going on on these little these little seaweed thingies here. We're gonna give them some pretty good texture. And this one, I'm just completing them to the to the bottom of the paper. Just filling those in. This part right here, because it's in 
it's kind of it's indented kind of so it's going to make it look like it's weight like it's going bending in the water this side is going to be the shadow side oh i bet you know my kids were pretty little when we took them and it was amazing Although my daughter thought she was super brave and was like, she wanted to do the alien encounter so bad. And we were like, we think you're too young for that. And she was like, I can handle it. I can do it. I can handle it. And she was, she was young, but not really young. She's five years um, older than my son. So she insisted. So my husband said, let her go. I'll go with her. And I was like, okay. They came back and she was like, I should have never done that. <laughs> She's like, I was so scared. I was like, I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen to me. And my son absolutely hated the Tower of Terror. We have a picture of him and he was grabbing my arm so bad. Oh, that's right. And my mom knows all about it because she went, they went to, my, my mom and dad went to Disney with us when we took the kids. It was awesome. So they got to be there too. And we have, were having so much fun. We ended up booking like an extra day. We had to go ask the hotel, Would, can we book an extra day? Because we wanted to do some downtown stuff. And hi, Kathy Martin. We didn't feel like we could uh, fit it all in with the Disney. But man, were we glad my parents had booked the room with the jacuzzi tub that we could put our feet in at night so we could walk the next day. That was super great. That was really bonus right there. So I wanted to get this really yellowish green in there since we have this really muted brownish green. So I thought the bright green would look good. So that's why I chose those really bright colors for that one. Oh, we already did this one on this one. So now we gotta do this one. This is YG17. And pull off the cap on this one because I'm on the other end because I'm not gonna have this one out very long. I'm not even gonna give it time. Oh, I just caught myself do, flipping that marker again. I don't know why I do that. I don't really um, know if it just helps me like get ready for what I'm about to do or what. Oh, let's see if I could color you to sleep. I don't know. I'm pretty funny tonight. Talking about crazy stuff, and I'm doing a lot of talking. But there is a lot of coloring, so it may it may uh, just do that. We're only about maybe halfway through, maybe, because we still have fish to color too. But the fish will be easy and fast because I've colored like a couple hundred of these fish, so it doesn't take me any time at all now to color the fish. This one's YG21. This one's the really bright yellow green color that really makes those little seaweeds stand out. So there we go. These are all the details. <laughs> I pretty much do that to you every night. <laughs> well, at least you have something to to focus on before you go to sleep. That's that's kind of fun. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is this last little piece of coral I have over here on the side, which is pretty much one I didn't write down either. So we're just gonna wing it again. Okay, let's go for Let's go for the RV 29, the 25, and then let's do thirty-four and then forty-two. That's gonna be kind of a jump around the calendar around the 
you know, chart, but I think we'll be okay. It is relaxing. It's, I prefer to be doing it, but it, I'm relaxed when I watch Jamie Keller as well, especially when she gets into those backgrounds and starts going back and forth. It's very meditative. Okay, so with the RV29, this one little coral is a little bit hard to see. I'm going to go ahead and put in the frame, the outline that I've drawn. I'm going to make it a little more clear in here. And then in a minute, I'm going to put some darker color in there again. So I'm going to come in from this bottom part and I'm going to put some dark in these. I want this coral to really stand out. I'm going to go in between here again and give it some in the middle. In each one. So this is just a little bit of coral over on the side. We're doing pretty good though. This one is RV25. Ooh, this marker needs cleaned. Very badly. So it's just following those very same lines I already put out there for the inner parts. Just kind of making that stand out. And then we're going to come in with this RV34, which is going to be a whole different tone of color. But we're going to do it anyway right around the top and the sides, but we're not going to do the center. We're just going to kind of round this out a little bit, smooth out our lines. Yep, right there. And then we're going to take the lightest color Thanks. Yeah, our fish are going to be pretty, pretty popping for sure. Because our background it has some brightness to it, but the real pop is going to come when we do the fish. So this one is RV42, and it's going to kind of definitely be a different tone that we're putting into this coral. So this is what's going to make it all blend together and give it a little bit of a different tone. See that? It looks a little bit like the colors that we put in the bats. I like that pop of color in there. We just used a little bit different technique, but kind of the same-ish colors. So there we go. I think what we need, the last little bit we need to do is we need to go back in with the darkest color. And we need to make those lines stand out again. So here and here and here, we kind of lost a little bit of that. So we're just going to bring those colors back out. Make them look good. So that it has a shape to it. There we go. So that makes it look a little bit more defined. Okay, so that's our coral. And then, let's see, do we want to do our jellyfish, blowfish, little fish, goldfish? Let's do our jellyfish next. So our jellyfish is going to be our... 89, 85, 83, and 81. So let's draw this little jellyfish in here so you guys can see how to do that. So when I do it, I'm going to do it with my lightest color first. That way if I have to change anything, I'll still have some room to do that. Some play room. So we're going to just going to build this part up right here. I want that to be a little more round and bubbly with a little bit of a flat top here. 
and then a little bit more black across here. And then I want to, I'm going to darken this part up here and then I'm going to do these little, these little lines, almost like an umbrella kind of. Let me turn this so I can get them going the right way. So we're really just drawing in some little lines here. We want this little guy to look pretty cute. So now that I feel pretty good with that shape, I'm going to start coming in with the darkest color, which is the R89. So this one, I want to build that top part up pretty solid all the way around because we're really drawing this in. This bottom part is going to be much thicker. And then really light right here around the edge. And back to that thickness down there. Okay, so these little, these little tangled things that we do down here. So I'm just going to start drawing those in. Some are going to cross. Some are not. Squiggly lines, that's what this is. Squiggly lines just going in different directions. And that's all we need is just a few of those little lines there to make it look like a jellyfish. Pretty easy, not too difficult. You guys can handle it, I know it. Here's R85, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are liking it. So this is R85, this is the second darkest one. So I'm gonna kind of go around this area right here. Kind of blend this out. Make it a little thicker at the top. Thinner on the sides. Okay. And then I'm going to draw these in now that I feel pretty good about them. So we just put them in the light color to test it out. I like where they're at. So I'm going to just build them out from there. Okay, so we're going to come in to the next color, which is RV80, I mean R83, not RV, just R, R83. And this one, I'm going to start building out a little bit more from the top, kind of going down each one of these lines to sort of thicken them and make them a little softer. Same with this one. Kind of covering that top, coming out on that top a little bit to make that top look a little bit more flat. And then we're going to come off from the bottom and do the same thing. We want it to look kind of like it's bubbling out, like a jellyfish does. And then with this one, I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to go down these tentacles, just redrawing them to kind of give that a little bit like some of it's light, some of it's dark, giving it a little bit time to dry. So it'll really pop out now. There we go. And I think that helps. That just makes it look so like there's so many more tentacle things hanging off of him. Then we're going to take our R81, which is the lightest color in our blend, and that's where we're just going to finish this out. Get that back and forth swoosh kind of motion. And now we have a jellyfish. So now we have a jellyfish on our page. So that's it for those. Look how many markers we've already used. Holy cow. Okay, so next, let's do the, let's go ahead and do the blowfish, 
RV 19, 17, 14, and we're going to pull that 42 out again. So RV 19, 19, 17, 14, 42, and let's go ahead and put the 13 in there as well. Thanks. Did I lose you guys yet? I bet I still got a few people watching, huh? You guys are dying to see what this looks like when we get done, aren't you? I know you are. Me too. I'm dying to know too how it's going to come out. Can we fi can we finish it in 30 minutes? I don't know. We're going to try. Okay, so RV 19's next. Here we go. I'm going to put every one of y'all to sleep. <laughs> You'll catch the replay in the morning. Okie doke. That sounds great. Good night. Have a good evening. Get lots of rest. Okay, so this is my darkest color. So I'm going to do the bottom of this little jellyfish. So I'm going to build this wall. I mean, this is not a jellyfish. What am I saying? This is a blowfish. So I'm going to just kind of build that wall so I can work out from the wall. I'm also going to build one right here above the fin. I'm going to go along the back side here, kind of push out because I want that to be really dark where the tail is. And then I'm not going to go around it anymore for that. Hi, Nicole. Yay, we got a newbie jumped in. Not that you're new to the group, but that someone new tonight popped in. So we're building this um, ocean scene from one, two, three stamps. And these two were stamps. The rest of it's all showing how to hand draw in all the pieces that you need. <laughs> Super glad you jumped in. I had a few people just, I think I just put a few people dozed off because it's pretty late for them. Okay, so I'm building up from that little wall with the next color, which is RV17. And then I'm going to build out also from his tail. Kind of extending just a little bit, but not too far. This is where I want to kind of put a little bit of color over his eye because I want to color in this part of his eye as well. I'm going to come down his face a little bit. And we'll build that mouth in a little bit more here in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and put in the stripes that are in the, the fins, because we'll need those for later. Since we have this marker out, we might as well do it. There we go. Oh, you love the bats. I love the bats. I'm still looking at them. I still have them sitting on my desk because they're just so beautiful. I'm super happy with the bats. I'm hoping I'm going to be just as super happy with this one, but we'll see when I get done. <laughs> you know, you can watch the replay on YouTube or in the group, so definitely go check it out. I have already uploaded it to YouTube, so it's out there. So this one's a much brighter color. So I'm just extending out from where I stopped with the last color because I really, I thought I needed some more purplish red, pinkish red in here to really make this whole scene pop. So I chose these RVs. Yay, I'm so glad you shared that information with your friend too. We love having new people. I only have a few that actually watch at night because it is kind of late for us central people. I'm a night owl though, so I'm usually up at least an hour or so after I finished the live, so it's not late for me. I knew this one would be a long one tonight, but since I can't be here tomorrow night, yes, since I can't be here tomorrow night, I wanted to give you guys a big one. So I decided to just, this is my third color in the combo, so I'm going to go ahead and just finish off that top part right there. I'm going to kind of start building in this little mouth right here. You're on central time as well? Yeah, so it's going to be, so it's late for you too, just like me. 
to this RV13, but I'm a night owl. I'm such a night owl. So I am usually coloring late at night like this anyway. So I might as well be doing it with anyone else who's a night owl. Just gonna put this little wall around the eye because I don't wanna color in the eye. So that's the purpose of that. going to start filling in the mouth a little bit. I'm going to change that with the next one and I'm going to use the colorless blender on that so be ready for that when it comes. Okay so we might need this one again but we're going to go ahead and throw in that Wow Factor RV42 that I love so much. This one is more of a peachy than a pink which really starts making this this little fish kind of pop. So just filling that in, giving that a real good full lot of ink. Get his little, little tongue on this one. Then I'm going to go ahead and put fill in his little fins with this color because I didn't put very much of any other color in there so it's really going to make those fins look really light. This really makes this guy pop. I think it's this RV42 that really pops it out. So I did accidentally get a teeny bit in his eye. Can you see that? <laughs> but we'll fix it. So he got a little bit in his eye. So we're going to have to fix that in just a minute. I'm giving it just a second for it to dry. And then I'm going to go in there and fix that. I kind of lightened that up a little bit too light, so I'm going to have to go back in and fix that as well. But it will only take a second. So here's RV14. This 14 is going to fix that. Boom. Fixed. This is my colorless blender. So when you use the colorless blender, just so you know, don't touch, touch just outside of where that is. Just a little teeny bit and it will push it right outside the line. See how it's all gone now? Yay! So there, I fixed my, my little spot there. And now I'm going to just lightly touch this mouth area. So I just want to lighten it up a teeny bit, not too much. One more swoosh. And then that will be perfect for me. So I need to go back in, he has pink eye, he has pink eye, with the RV17 and that's where I'm just going to fill in these little, these little blowfish dots. I just want them to kind of stand out so just kind of filling those in. Not with the darkest color, but with the second to the darkest color. So you won't see it quite so much at the bottom, but it really does make it look pretty cool. So there we go. Okay, so that's that's one fish down. And that fish doesn't have pink eye anymore. Yay! Okay. So next, we're going to do the goldfish, which is this one. Which it wouldn't be, really be a goldfish in the ocean, I don't think. But, but oh well. So this one's going to have a little bit of a pop color as well. So I'm going to do it with YR18, 16, 15, and then I'm going to throw a just plain yellow in there. So two, three YRs, 18, 16, 15, and then I'm going to throw in Y35, and that's an all yellow color. So I'll show you how that works. So here comes our bright orange goldfish. While I have this YR18, I'm going to go over this one more time to really darken it. Because that's what color we used on it earlier. And I just want to darken those shades just a little bit. Okay, excellent. Alright, so I'm going to go in here 
and I'm going to choose where I want my darkest spots to be. So I'm going to put some in this bin right here. Just following these artist drawn lines a bit. And then I'm going to come up from this tail area right here and just do the underside of this fin with this darkest color. I am going to do the underside of this one because it's the underside of the fish. Right here, I'm going to draw in these same little gills. And then I'm going to do these little brush strokes into his tail. I'm going to follow the artist's drawn lines again. Yeah, I know, I just saw that. I told him I was going to try to finish in 30 minutes, but I just don't know if that's going to happen. But it'll be close. It won't be too much after that. Okay, so on this area right here, I want to come in from the tail. And on this area right here, I'm going to just build in a little bit of a fold. And also here as well. I just kind of like the way that looks. It makes the tail like it's look like it's moving a little bit more than the artist drawn lines. So I'm just adding a little bit of that personality myself. And then down here, I'm going to do just these insides of this fin for now. And this side because it's under the fish. Then I like to do this part right here. Because I always think that that gill area is pretty dark when the little fish are breathing. Now I'm going to come off of these lines that I built here and I'm just going to put a little small brush strokes on here. I'm going to do it off of this one, only where I put these lines at. And I'm not going to do it in the tail or the fin, just the body. Hi Beth Johnson, we had somebody else join us. Yay! Like it's moving in the water, that's right. Exactly. So, oh, yeah, and so now you're jumping back in and look how much we got done. YR16, so extending. This one's going to be a way more brighter orange, but I think it makes that, that fish really pop. Okay, we're going to continue to pull this color out. I'm going to go back over it just again one more time just to blend that those two colors together. Because this this one orange and the second one, they're they're pretty. One's pretty dark and one's pretty bright. But if you touch them long enough, they'll blend together really smoothly. Okay, so now we're going to start building out the tail a little bit, kind of going over those colors I already put in there and extending out a little bit. Coming back over this and over this one. A few little brush strokes into the tail. We'll give it some personality. Coming back. Kind of make that a little more completed. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to make that like a full, full circle. Go over our other lines. These fish are amazing. They're super fun to color. Like I said, I've colored these fish about 400 times, and I'm not joking. I showed on another live how many Jamie and I had colored, and it was an enormous amount of fish. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing right here. We're going to pull out just a little bit from where we put that little gill area, and then we're going to build it from there up his face just a little bit. So I'm not going to do much inside this fin because I want this fin to be really yellow with the last color. 
So we draw this jellyfish while you were gone, Julie. Isn't that awesome? YR15 is going to be our next color for this fish. And we're almost getting there. We just have one more fish, sand and water. And we'll throw in a couple bubbles while we're doing the water. Okay, so we're just extending out from where we did the last color. And since we can't extend right there because the fin is there, I'm going to put a little bit more in here, but not much. I want to save it for that last color. Just kind of smoothing out these colors here. I'm going to fill in that middle one. Making these just a little more smooth. These fish are so fun. Okay, so now we just have to do a little bit more here. A little bit on his face. So I'm going to kind of build his eye area because I want to make sure I don't go in it with the color with the yellow when I do it. Okay. So that's where we're going to have our yellow. So now we have this pretty orange fish, but we're going to now fill it in with Y35 and it's going to blend so beautifully. Now we're going to do that back and forth. Look how smooth that is. Wasn't that super cool? It blended so smooth. Now we're going to do it up here on the face. Okay. Now we're going to do it in this fin. This fin is going to be a little bit more orange. And this one is going to be a little bit more yellow. And then we're going to go from the tip down to, so you can really see the yellow on the top. And then we're just going to do the back and forth to blend out the tail. And we're going to have a really beautiful gold orangey fish. There we go. Super cool. Now there's one more thing you can do for a little bit of extra texture, and that is go back in with the YR18 and you can put some dots on him. And all that does is just bring a little bit more texture to this little guy. No rhyme or reason to how many or where you put them. We're just kind of building it in just to give them a little texture. It's a little bit hard to see with that light shining on it, but when I hold it up, you can see it. It's super cute. I like, I mean, I like it. Okay, so that's our orange fish. Now our last um, little fish is going to be V09, 17, 15, and 12. I think we already had 12 out. This one will be a, this one's a super fast one to color. V09, 17, 15. I'm so glad you think so. That was my goal was to get a lots of color in there because the background's gonna be so blue-ish green that we needed a lot of pop of color in there. So V09, so this is where we're gonna go over where the artist drawn lines were in the fish fins. That's a tongue twister. And then this one, gonna do it from the opposite end. I like this back and forth right here in the tail to show that that's a very small section, so it's pretty dark. And we're gonna come along the bottom here the gill, 
And then I like to do all these little gills too with the darkest color. I'm going to do around that one, but not inside of it. You thought I was doing color combo cards? We really could have though. That's why I always say the fish are really great to practice on because you can try so many different colors as soon as you get the pattern the way you want to color it. You can try every color. So we were playing with color combos when we did it for sure. Okay. Grape Angel. Yep, these 17. You never know what's in the bottom of the ocean. I'm just doing some brush strokes towards the front of his face. I'm not going to put too awful much because his color is still pretty dark. I'll put a lot more of the next one in there. We did do a ton of these fish. I still have a bunch of them I need to cut out. They're all small. Yeah. They are. They're pretty small. That's why they're pretty fun and quick. So they don't really take that long to do. Unless you're putting rainbow fish like Jamie. Then they take a little longer. Because she's blending a whole lot of colors together. So I'm blending that. But I want to leave the tip for the lightest color. Now I'm going to really start blending this color out. I'm going to come around the front of his face. This is more like my true color. Sound like my husband's thawing something in the room. He's still working late too. He mo for the most part stays up with me while I do my lives. Okay. And our last color is going to be B12. And that's going to be much brighter. So I'm going to come from that end and blend the opposite way. I'm going to do the same thing with the little tail. And other fin. I want this fin to stay that really light color. And then the back and forth here for the body. These are a little bit dark colors, so I'm going to go over that dark line edge one more time. Just to kind of smooth that out a little bit so we get a really smooth fish. Super duper, super duper cute purple. How's the costume coming? He's a little bit behind, so he's been stressing a little bit. Okay, so that's it for those. So now it's time to start on the sand. He's got a helmet done though, or almost done. So that's super cool. E42 we used earlier, so we need that color again. I know he's so pretty in purple, isn't he? 81 and W0. 81 and W0. 81. And 81. Okay, so we have a lot of colors for the sand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 colors and only a 5 color stand. I have two though. I have two. Okay, so I'm going to sit this over here. What we're going to do is start building our sand out. So I'm going to start with the W0. And that's where I'm going to build where I want the sand to be. So I want all the sand in here. And then I want it to be maybe like, like here.
So I'm gonna go, just gonna go in and fill all of this in in gray real quick, just for a base wet coat. Just wanna wet it before I start putting a bunch of other stuff on there. You see that fuzzy on my marker? And since this is the base coat, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get that paper wet again. I'm going to pull a little bit of green on that one. I'm going to try real hard not to do that again. The fish are fabulous. That's because I colored them so many times. I got that down for sure. So it really is true. Practice, 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 practice. I knew the fish would be easy. My husband's like, just do the background. You can do the fish later and add them on. I was like, the fish are the easiest part. They're the less, least time consuming part. And they're the what brings your eye to the paper, so. Gotta have them on there. Okay, so just filling out in between this. Just want to make sure that that paper gets saturated a little bit. So when I start putting those little sand dots in there, it really comes together. Okay, so I know this is all going to be sand down here. Then we're going to start with water and go up. So the water will be a little faster because the sand is teeny tiny little dots. So that pouncing or whatever you want to call that, some are big, some are small, we're just going to start doing that all over the place. This is how we build sand right here. We won't solidly color in between these things again. That was just to wet the paper. Unless we just, you know, really have to, but I don't think we will. Just trying not to stay in the same pattern when you put them down and trying not to put them over each other is the only thing that you have to worry about. And then make sure you don't leave yourself like a line right there. Sometimes I do that. It took me a long time to be able to do these without trying to put the dots in the same exact spot every time. Exactly, exactly. I, you know, this is challenging for me too, just by the way. This is the first time I've built the background, like, with more things than just a sky or you know, water or whatever, but this one actually I drew the seaweed in and stuff like that. And I like that it's challenging me too. Um, I needed to do more of it. And so I thought what better way to do that than to practice when I'm with you guys. Because why well, become like, if I'm super great, I might forget to tell you something really awesome. So if I just start with you guys when I'm less experienced, you'll learn with me. And I'm sure sometimes we'll have a fail or a, you know. But hey, that's how we'll learn. Then I can say, don't do this. So you'll know for sure. <laughs> but these, I mean, I say they're easy. I mean, I wouldn't say they were easy. I would say they look hard. But they're way easier than you think they are. Once you get into it and you start doing it. And if you just concentrating on, on doing your test, um, your test drawing with a light, light color. I mean, there were several spots on this, um, this one down here that I did not put in the same place as the light, light gray when I was drawing it out that I, but you can't see it now. So as long as you start drawing out what you want to do with that really, really light color, it will help you a lot. Because then if, if you didn't like it, then you just in fact, the one that I did earlier, I had even drawn like a whole ocean part at the top, like it was at the top of the ocean and the water was wavy or whatever, and I had all these lines all over the paper. And then 
when I decided to finish it up, I never did even put that. I just made the whole thing blue and you can't see any of it. So it totally works to use those light colors because you can't see them once you get done. So that's the key, I think. I'm just gonna put this really light line over him. This is the third color that I've used. My next colors are going to be really, really light, so I'm going to use this one for my shadowing. So I'm just going to build out that line that I put in gray right here at the top. And I'm going to put in a little bit of shadowing here and a little bit here. I don't know how much of it you'll be able to tell when I finish the project, but I'm going to put them in there anyway, just because. And then down here, of course, for sure. I want some shadow there. And then I'm going to put some shadow here. Because this fish is going to shadow the ocean floor because he's so close to it. I'm just kind of following the shape of his body because you'll be able to see that. And I am kind of doing a little bit of a bouncy motion on there. And I am gonna do just a little bit up here as well, like he's shadowing over this one. This little fish I'm shadowing here. I'm gonna kind of go down like it was, like it's his tail. So just giving it just a little bit of shadow, like they're just swimming right above the ocean floor. Now I'm going to put a few dots down here in the other parts where I didn't shadow, just so I can deepen this up a little bit. But not too close to where I put that big shadow. And I only want to put a few. I don't want to make it too thick because I don't want it to look just like the shadow. I just want to add a little bit. Just dotting them around randomly wherever. Okay, now the next color is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be um, E53. So E53 has a little bit of a different tone. So this one you're going to be able to see. It'll stand out. It's brighter. I want to get a little bit closer to the... to my little coral here to fill in some of that white because the sand I don't want to see much of that white on the sand when I get done so again just pouncing around Bounce all over randomly finish the replay in the morning really tired okay good night mama thanks for hanging out so long you almost made it. I, I promise they won't always be this long, but I just felt like it tonight. Okay. So the next one in the combo is going to be E81, and it's pretty light. It's called ivory, but I don't know if I really believe that I think it's ivory. But, just going to be putting in a little bit more of that, making sure I don't touch that blue. I may have to go in on the shadow under the fish one more time just to make it really stand out now that I'm filling in the rest of this. I don't mind it will only take a second this one I'm doing still pouncing a bit but I'm doing it on the side of the marker instead of the tip so that it puts more ink on the paper kind of fills in those spots for me so that's the difference between what I was doing before and what I'm doing now okay so that's pretty much our sand I think what I'm going to do is go in with this W0 one more time and do some really big, like, filling it in. 
this is this W zero is like gray, so it's gonna kind of tone some of that down. I'm not gonna do it where I want to put that shadow. I just wanted to get a, some of that filled in. And then I'm gonna come back in with the 31, and I'm just gonna put some of that shadow back in here that we washed out with those other colors. Cause I kind of like that shadow effect of the fish on the ground. And then this one here, and there's a little tail coming out. Because I think that really, that's really pretty cool. Okay, so that's our sand, and that didn't take too long. That was pretty fast. All right, time for the ocean. B26, B24, B52, B12, B00, and B63, So and BG11. So four dark ones and three really light ones. Did I put my BG? Oh, there it is. I know, I'm almost done. Just got the water. Okay. So B26, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so I want the bottom part of the ocean to be darker and the side, so I'm gonna go ahead and start filling this in a little bit. So here we go. We're gonna use the back of the marker so we can do this just a little bit faster. So we're building our wall around the outside. I skipped this one spot because I'm going to put a little tree there. And when I put that little tree there, I don't want to, it won't go over this dark blue. So I skipped that little space. I do want to do a little bit in here because I think this underside, this ocean part will be really dark. Even though there'll be some light up here, I think this part down here will be very, very dark. There'll be a little bit of light, but not this far down. Not in my ocean anyway. Hehehe. <laughs> Jamie would be so proud. You are right. She would. She would be super proud. But when you do an ocean, you almost need a lot of colors for sure. Because you got to get the blues and the greens and the light and the dark. So it takes quite a bit of colors. I'm going to come in here because there will be some shadow around the fish. And these little dark areas. Do a little bit underside in the belly. Under this fin. And over here. And here. Okay, I'm not going to do it on the other one. Don't want it to go up that far. So the next color is going to be B24. And I'm going to start putting these in here so I know which color is like, which color I started with. And because you can get out of whack pretty fast on these. So this is B24. So I'm just kind of blending this out. It's quite a bit lighter. I think together it's darker than what I'm going to have when I end. Here we go. Bringing this out. Trying not to touch those seaweed. I don't want to pull that green color out of there. 
But I do want to blend these a little bit. Like I did with that one. And like I did with this one. When we're not doing such small spaces, we'll switch to the chisel side of the marker. But these small spaces, I want to stay with the brush nib. And my marker is super juicy because I just filled it up. So you don't have that screechy sound. Okay, so that blended in pretty smooth. I like that. Now, let's go over here and start blending this one out. going in all different directions just so long as the paper is saturated we're in good shape which it seems to be going very well so building it up we're going to get lighter as we go up and we're going to get real light right around here because we want the the sun shining in i should probably um stop real quick and put these little um trees in here that I wanted. I wanted to do them with YG95, which is right here. So I want to just kind of draw these in. And I'm really just randomly putting them in there. Nothing of specific consistency. Just building these out. And I want to go ahead and give it time for this um, ink to dry before I do the next one. Like that. So we're just putting some little bit of seaweed up there on that shelf right there. And I can't come in with this BB24 until that's on there. So, I'm going to keep going with this one just right around the ledge. Now we're going to start going up this side. And we're going to use the other end. So here we go. Let's really start getting this color in here. So really want to wet the paper. And then we want to start pulling out from it. Pulling it out the, from there. So kind of saturated the paper and now I'm doing those strokes but just with the chisel side of the marker going back over it to smooth out those lines just where it's needed and super pretty very smooth. I'm going to do the same thing over here, but I'm going to wait and give them a little bit more time to dry, and then we're going to color those in. I'm going to need to color, uh, clean my desk from all the ink I've been putting on it all week. Okay, so once we get that color in there, we're just going to start pulling it out. Okay. Now we're going to go in and get us some good color in here. This is the trickiest part right here. Getting close to that, still blending it out, but not really touching that green. So we got to get this color in there. This is the trickiest part. If you go over it, it's okay. As long as you're not coloring completely over it, you'll still be able to see the green. So it's not rocket science, but just try to be careful. And it's just paper, so. You may have to go over it more than once because you can't put a whole lot of ink down there when you're 
going so slow and doing such tiny, tiny strokes. But as long as you get enough in there, you should be good. You should be golden. Almost done. It really is okay. I have put a little bit of this blue over some areas of the green. It's totally fine. You'll still be able to see enough of the green. That's all that matters. So don't freak out. And if you don't like, want to do that part, then just don't draw in the little trees. We're just putting them there for the base. When, I, when we get done with the blue, we'll go back in and draw them one more time, and that'll deepen them up. We'll just draw right over top of what we already put in there. We're just making sure we got our placeholders for these super cool little things. This is the part that takes the most time. Even the bubbles are faster than this. But we'll put a couple little bubbles over these fish when we get done. It won't take too long. Like I said, this is the part that's taken the longest. It will all go faster. Just want to make sure that's dark enough. One more little section and we're done with this little green doom of logic. I gotta kind of concentrate when I'm doing that because I don't want to go over it completely. It doesn't look that great right now, but trust me, when you get done, you'll like it. Or at least I hope you will. Close to the fish, moving out, smoothing that out. Just going to do a little more right here. Blend that out again. Wipe that paper again for the next color. Okay, so we got pretty good, pretty good colors and blends going on here. Probably should have put some in here. Sorry, that was a last minute thought. Okay, next color is going to be B52. So this one I'm going to start doing even more with. So this one's going to wash out the other color a little bit. So we got to do some overlapping of it. But it's also going to lighten up the color and give it some texture. Getting close to the jellyfish, but not too close. I'm gonna put a little bit more over top of this blue because I want these colors to blend together. This is where the light starts shining through, giving it a little bit of a different look. That's why I didn't make it too thick right here on the edge because I want these two to blend really well together and look like lighting. down over top of this little fish right here with this dark color and then we're going to switch colors 
soon as we smooth that out. Got a switch color in there. You are you using? Yes, I am using sweet sentiment paper. I sure am. I sure am. We're going to try to use some BG11, but I'm going to two fist it tonight. I'm going to be using B12 and BG11. So, not kidding. So, this one is, I'll tell you when I switch, this one is B12. I want to just get some B12 in here which is a little bit more of a blue. And then I'm going to switch to BG11. This one is blue-green, so this one is going to be a much lighter color. So I'm going to leave that uh, B12 open because I might need that for blending them together. Sometimes I can hold both those markers and roll with it, but when I'm thinking about it, I can't. Okay, so we're just putting a little more of the BG11 in there because it's kind of the ocean color, and we want to, you know, mix that in there. So I'm going to put it even over top of this dark, dark, dark blue. It will also texturize that color a bit. Okay, so with this BG11, I am literally going to just go right over top of this little jellyfish. I mean, right over top of it. Because we all know that jellyfish are kind of that see-through, iridescent, whatever you want to call it, color. So I just went right over top of it. I wouldn't do it with a darker color, but with this BG11, it worked great. So see how that jellyfish looks? Nope, it does not lose its sparkle when you color over it. In a minute, I'll show you. You can still see the sparkle. So this one needs a little bit more of this B12. Need just a little bit more deeper blue before we make it. And this one is the BG11. So we needed a little bit more of the blue blue in there to go with the BG11. So this little jelly is right about to swim into the darker area of the ocean for sure. So that's pretty cool. There we go. Alright, so let's go over here one more time just to make sure we lighten this up a little bit. To look like the rest. I think my least favorite part right now is this is too down too far. This light is down too far. So I'm going to come back in with the B24. And I'm going to just color in a little bit more of this over top. Because remember, we can always make it darker. It's harder to make it lighter. So I'm just going to go back in with this second color that we used. Just kind of deepen that up a little bit. <coughs> now we will have to soften that out with the other colors. But I think it'll be okay. So back to the B12. I'm just leaving the marker caps off. I don't want to leave them off too long, but I do want to leave them off for a little bit just so that I can keep the color wet on the paper. Because the wetter the color, the easier it is going to be to blend all these colors together. So I want to kind of keep that paper wet. I'm just filling in a little bit more blue here. This B12. I am not going to go over the jellyfish with B12. I think it's too much and the jellyfish can't handle it. Hi Mickey. 
You just jumped right in late at night, huh? Kind of want this light to go up to the. So that's the BG11 again. I do want to darken this a little bit, so I think I'm going to tip the tip with this um, BG12. So I can get just a little bit darker look in here. So I'm taking the BG11 and just tip the tip with the BG12 so I can put just a teeny bit darker shade in here. I like the BG11. I think I, it needs a little bit darker. So just going to use that tip to tip. It's okay. It won't hurt my marker. There we go. So our jellyfish is getting sucked up to the light. There we go. I like the way that worked. We got a glow around our jellyfish. I'm loving that glow. But I want it to be kind of staggered. The glow kind of staggered with the color of the jellyfish. Not so defined. There we go. So much better. Isn't that better? So see, we just kind of build until we're happy with what we're building. And then at some point you have to know when to stop. And we're almost there. Okay, I'm like that blue. I'm gonna go ahead and put the caps back on these. This is B12. So that was just mixing the colors. We mixed a lot of colors together tonight. I think I'm finished with, it's amazing. You like it so far? Uh-huh. Okay, so we are gonna use um, this, let's use the B24 and let's color this fish eyes. So I'm just gonna go around a little eye like this. Just kind of give it a little bit of a blue, blue eyes. So we, need, we needed some eyes. There we go. Oops, totally awesome. Yay! Now we're gonna use our colorless blender if I can find it because I have like a bajillion markers on my on my desk. And we're gonna go around this one with the colorless blender. Just like we did with the bats the other night, just to kind of make that eye stand out a whole lot. And then when we do bubbles. We're just gonna do a little circle like this. A little bit bigger circle right here. A little bit bigger circle right here. So now we have some little bubbles. These are the easy way to make bubbles. And what you do is you just keep doing it a couple of times until you get that almost like that dark circle around it. And then you go in with a, like a very dark blue. Like we'll just use the 26 that we used on the... So we want to... I'm just going to dry it a little bit because it's really wet. See how saturated that is? And then if you just go in and use this dark and go around the bottom of the bubbles like this, It'll make them really look good. 
And if you want, you can take your white gel pen. Let me just make sure it's working real good. I'm gonna put one little dot here and here. We're gonna put one in this one's eyes and put one right here. And then we're gonna go in here and we're just gonna kinda put a little bit on each bubble. Just to kinda show that the light's at the top of the bubble. And then you have bubbles. So now, let me see if I can pull it out for you, if I can get it to work. Oh, there we go. So now we have a whole ocean scene right here that we did tonight. Now we can put a sentiment on there or whatever we want, or you can put a fish hook or, you know, whatever you want to add to it. But this is our ocean scene that we made. This is the one I sampled with. And I like this one better. <laughs> I kind of like these closer together than this, but hey, you never know. So anyway, yes, this is our creation tonight. This was super fun. I really liked it. I love how it came out. You saw how easy bubbles are. Bubbles are very easy to give the impression that it's bubbles. Look at them up close. Don't they look like bubbles? They're really simple to make. Here, here's the whole thing up close. We could go over this one more time. Let's go over this one more time. Really make this stand out. Because we said we were going to do that. So now it kind of looks like those are glowing a little bit more. So that helps with those. And then I forgot to put in that last one of these that we were gonna do. But you can do that right over top of what you were already doing. And that was YR18. And this one's YR15. We're just going to extend it out a little bit, make it longer. And that's how you add the coral. Let me just add a second coral here. I think it'll really bring, really brings it together. Yes, my glass mat is Tim's, Tim Holtz glass mat. It's the big one. You like it? Yay! I'm so glad you liked it. It was super fun, and look at how easy, if you just break it down into little bitty pieces, you guys can do it too. It's, it's easier than it looks. You're welcome. Thanks for sticking through for the whole show, and for those who might come and check it out later, <laughs> thanks for checking it out on YouTube. Um, so, as soon as we're done, I'll post it to YouTube and we'll be good. Don't forget, I won't be here tomorrow. I will make a post in the group so everybody who's not here tonight will know. I won't be here tomorrow, but I'll be back on Monday with some new projects for you. Thanks, everybody. Good night.